Joining us right now, GFI Group Chief Macro Strategist, John Spallanzani. John, good to see you. Good to see Thanks you. Thanks so much for joining us. How important are the financial earnings uh, in, in this earnings period? We know that expectations call for earnings growth of almost 10% to the S&P 500. I think that's expected. So, you know, once you have expected, you're seeing stocks like Netflix unchanged. You saw uh, Bank of America, I mean, uh, JP Morgan, Citibank, right? Stocks really didn't react too much to the earnings. Uh, so I think right now geopolitical events are really taking center stage, uh, so to speak. So we'll have to see how they play out. You know, Theresa May, again, just snap elections June 8th. We have the French elections this weekend. We have Italy after that. So there are a lot of big uh, volatile events happening in Europe. And, and actually the European VIX is a lot higher than our VIX, which is, was up to 16. God that's, why you. You, that's why you think that um, things are volatile, because markets are focusing on GOP, G, uh, geopolitical events. That's usually not the case. Markets rarely focus on geopolitical well, events. Well, when you have North Korea threatening the okay. fact that we're going to have nuclear war yesterday, you know, those types of things obviously push markets around and takes your eye off of NIM, right, net interest margins of banks, right? You're not really worried about NIM when you're talking about nuclear holocaust. So I think that uh, those things, you know, do play a role in traders' minds. These banks are reporting slower loan growth uh, the last few days. What do you make of that? Is that a problem? Is it a warning sign? Well, we see C&I loans are down, you know, but they're also down from very high levels, right? We, we had huge growth, and now we're seeing a little bit of a pause. I, think, I don't think it's a... I don't, I don't think it's a problem. I think the big thing that we talked about last time we were on was that housing type, uh, the housing is really where the loans are going to be, and that's going to be regulations. And there's still regulations holding back bank lending. You know, again, going back to Jamie Dimon's comments, yeah. just a little bit reduction in regulations will add, you know, $400 billion that he'll be able to lend uh, to consumers. So I think you have, you know, and Quarles, right, just uh, came on board uh, as the next Fed nominee. He wants to reduce regulations, but he's also talking about maybe having a Fed a rule. He's going to take place. over for Dan Tarullo, Dagan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, in terms of the amount of risk that's factored into the market, you talked about geopolitical risk. The 10-year yields at two and a quarter percent. I mean, that that's a significantly off the recent highs. Is that a sign that at least the market is anticipating kind of geopolitical uncertainty and unrest? Yeah, we have this global yield curve that's compressed, compressing again, right? We saw Japanese uh, JGB yields went negative again for the first right. time. We see, uh, you know, uh, again J uh, German. Bonds are down to 17 basis points, you know, possibly going negative again. So all those effects are really pushing money into treasuries again. And, and, and there's that constant bid under the market for, for good yeah, paper. Earlier we were talking about tax reform, the prospects yeah, of it. How that. much uh, in, in these earnings is, is a reflection of anticipation some of these companies may have of a more business-friendly climate? I think there's a lot of unknowns, right? There's a lot of unknowns on health care, right? You see ACA, you see a lot of people don't know how to plan insurance companies, that kind of thing. There's a lot of unknowns about tax planning, you know, whether it's going to be reform or tax cuts. Uh, so I think that's a lot of things that are holding back people in terms of lending, right, taking out loans. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of the people who really wanted to leverage up have leveraged up. That's so what Donald, Donald, like Donald Trump always says. This is one of the more important parts of his policy, the, the, the rolling back of regulation, because yes. that's also going to move the needle on earnings. That's By the right. way, I just want to point out that Netflix hit the tape. Uh, it's better than expected. It's 40 cents a share versus an estimate of uh, 37 cents a share. The company is definitely a name to watch. The streaming site predicting it will soon hit 100 million subscribers. There's the stock this morning uh, flat. Uh, but this is one that was, 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 we were watching, John, because technology has done so well recently. Whether it's the stocks of Google and Apple and Netflix, this is where the money's been moving, yes? Well, we saw, we saw banks and technology have a huge run-up rate, especially the Russell had a huge run-up after the Trump election. And then we have this huge pause in consolidation. So now, after this pause in consolidation, most people think we're going to go higher because under Republican administration, the whole sweep, that kind of thing, that eventually they're going to get their policies through. Yeah, so but what about again, what show me the money. I mean, are you, is the market disappointed right now that they've blown off the August deadline? I mean, it's all about well, policy. Actually, That's actually, what you're asking, right, Pete? Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, when, when uh, Mnuchin spoke yesterday, the fact that he was going to find a trillion dollars other than 
from healthcare and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. that the market actually rallied on that. I, I just want to point out top, above the full top story in the journal today is that insurers are scrambling to put together and price the plans for the next year. And That's it's something what we're we've talking. talked about repeatedly here. They have to present these plans in front of the state insurance commissioners in June and July. They're literally going across, going through Twitter looking for hints that they're going to get something done on health care reform. Trump, this is the Trump. kind of uncertainty That's that uncertainty. you do yep. not want to see. But Trump is counting on that to be a catalyst to get tax to get health reform done because he, he thinks the thing's going to implode. Right? Yeah. 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 We can talk about the politics later. He said it's exploding yeah. right now. It's falling right. apart as we speak because of exactly what you're but mentioning. Politically, the Republicans could wind up owning it, not the Democrats. That's the political calculation well, that is completely uncertain. Yeah, we'll see. It all depends on how it, how it plays out. Right. But ultimately, this was passed with Democratic votes. It's on them. But this is why we want your, your take on this right. because it's all about policy. You hear what Jacob's yeah. saying about Obamacare. Then John's saying they don't have a plan on tax reform. What are, what are the markets? Are the markets just basically we have a bid under the market until they royally screw up? There's a difference between tax reform, right, which is going to be very complicated, and tax cuts and reducing regulations, which are e much easier to do. So I think the market feels that Trump was a little bit bamboozled into thinking that he was going to get this health care thing done so quickly. So that's why you're seeing, you know, fight infighting with Batten, right? Now you're seeing, you know, Paul Ryan might be leaving, Rents Priebus. You, oh, you're seeing a lot of leaving. different... Paul Ryan's not going anywhere. Listen, but you're seeing... But Listen, whoever, somebody has to own this, right? It wasn't Trump who said, let's do health care first. So he's, he's kind of pretty upset that they did health care first and it didn't go through because they wanted to get that money from health care and apply it to the tax reform there's, tax there's, cuts, there's, right? So that backfired. Somebody's responsible for that and somebody will pay. And somebody, that, that group, yeah. one, one of those three guys is going to be gone. Mm. I guarantee it. All right, we will leave it there. John Scrates, let's get your insight. Thank you so much. John Spallanzani joining us there.